The simplest definition of a dialogue balloon is an indication of a character speaking, containing the thing that they're saying. It's pretty simple, and often a large component and tool in telling stories in comics. Open most mainstream work and you'll find numerous instances of it on the page. And the benefit of a balloon is obvious, you can have a character speak dialogue, communicating in a very specific way. With dialogue, you can be precise in a way that visuals are not necessarily. For example, if I showed you an image of a cat, you could draw a multitude of descriptors from that, and a different audience will. One might notice its whiskers more prominently, or one might notice its eyes more prominently, but a line of dialogue can be specific. The cat's eyes are sharp, that's all we've got. However, text loses some of that magic of telling something visually, the way an image can be specific in its visual, emotive without being direct, and it has the benefit of allowing the reader to actually see something rather than read it or hear about it. And by doing that, the audience becomes a much more active participant in understanding how this thing plays out. So in this episode, I want to take a look at Miranda by Grim Wilkins, which combines those two ideas, taking dialogue balloons, but filling them with imagery rather than words. You're watching Strip Panel Naked, I'm Hass, and I'm gonna show you some of the cool stuff lurking in the pages of some of the best comics. So Miranda is a comic told almost entirely visually. There's one instance of text in each chapter, and it's typically coded against a visual cue and left for you to reference as it doesn't appear on the same page as the time it's being spoken, apart from in very specific instances. Otherwise, all the dialogue balloons are just showing images instead of text. And if the world speaks in images, or these images are essentially being used as a translation, it's not really defined, nor does it seem to make much difference, because the actual balloons themselves remaining graphic is the most interesting facet of this. In its clearest and purest form, it appears in pages like this. Here's a fairly standard back and forth where a character appears to be asking about the location of a cave, to which the man shrugs in response and then asks about the bandage on her knee. And this, in effect, does a couple of very, very clever things. So firstly, it sets a tone for the story being told. Miranda becomes much more whimsical and magical because everything is kept visually. It also means you have to pay more attention to the images. And there have been numerous studies on tracking eyes in relation to text and imagery, and typically what happens is readers will notice the image, but they really do read the text as the primary objective, and then go back and relate that to the image being seen. And what Wilkins is able to do then, by dropping the text out, is force the image to be the only thing being read. I know that sounds really obvious, but it is important in the sense of understanding the world presented on the page. A reader has less specifics from the dialogue and has to work a little bit harder to unpick the full understanding of the page, especially one with Wilkins' very flowing style. But by doing that, Wilkins creates a very different experience than a traditional mainstream comic, one that's still different than another comic being told without words, because the dialogue balloons do remain there as a place of emphasis and absorption. And it also means that the times it does use text can add some extra narrative weight to those phrases, and lastly, it also means that images, as an additional panel on the page, can be used to add more time. For more on this concept, you can watch the Desolation Jones episode that was quite recent on Strip Panel Naked, but I will also go over how it works in Miranda too. Okay, so if we go back to that very, very first one, which is setting the tone of the story, Wilkins can use this concept of visual dialogue balloons to create a world that is magical. By removing standard text, it removes the verbal grounding. All we need to know is that beings can communicate in a way that others understand, and likely because of Wilkins' art style, in a much more lyrical and visual kind of language. It's a language that can add menace, like in this page in the first visual balloon, or it can add a sort of simplicity, like with this mushroom. There's an unreality to the way people speak that is impossible to replicate in the real world, and so by making the world on the page operate like this, it heightens that reality to something abnormal. And you have to work a little bit harder than you might with dialogue to really unpack what's being told in some instances. To use the quote, a picture paints a thousand words, and that can actually be an issue when you only want to say a couple of words. For example, the second panel in this page has a balloon coming from a character's eye and shows the ground below. It's one of the few instances in this comic where I had to read a little more attentively than if it had been replaced by text. Similarly with the balloon afterwards, there's some level of deciphering required, but that's an important and specific part of how Miranda works too. So if you replace that balloon with just text that said, you know, careful you'll fall, it'd be instantly more clear. But it also means the whimsy of that image is lost, it'd just be too specific. Where the image of her falling as being spoken by someone else has a lightness, a sort of bounciness that you would always, always lose if you put it into text. And it comes down to the basic premise of using imagery to tell a story. It opens up all this dialogue to the reader interpretation much more directly than it would if it was text-based. And so as a reader, you naturally have to engage more directly and become a much more active participant. I won't dwell on this next point too much, because I've talked about it in numerous episodes, but if you restrict something from the reader and then unleash it, it'll have some additional weight behind it. So if you hold red off for a whole issue and then suddenly the final page is dripping in it, chances are your reader will really notice that red. And it's the exact same with text. By holding back on almost every instance of text in the comic, Wilkins makes those very few moments with text stand out, like this moment here. That time and time again quote is probably the text you'll leave the comic remembering for the longest time, and specifically because it holds a lot of impact as an element that is otherwise not there. 
And the other thing that making balloons visual does is give you that more time on the panel. So this is what I mentioned about the Desolation Jones episode. Some books absolutely drown art in speech balloons, as I'm sure you've seen them. And an additional thing about this is it means you cover up the art. And if a page space equals time, then you're taking some time away from the imagery. So by using the space of the balloons to tell even more story, Wilkins creates more time on his pages. If you look at this page here, you have these men walking through the streets telling stories of a world that has been or may come to be. And the balloon is essentially creating its own panel at the top of the page, but the panel is also overlaid on the panel below it. So the reality of these men walking is being played with by their speech. We understand that there's another reality with these creatures destroying the city and these men are preaching it as they walk, some kind of monks, and they're painting a very, very vivid picture of it. And it seems like a very real picture of this tale and we both get to see it and understand it sequentially and as a unit of dialogue, which is genuinely pretty amazing. Another way this is typically used is when characters are telling a story like on this page, where the dialogue balloons are very simple panels as they would appear in any other comic, but wrapped with a tale. We understand the story being told because the comic form itself is giving us the imagery of the moments, and we understand that this is a story being told by the face the tale points to. There's not much more to it than that, and yet, because of the way it's being done, it feels like an incredibly expressive and boldly told story. It's got deep, rich colours completely taking over the page, and really dramatic imagery, like the low angle shot of the first panel here. It feels big and adventurous, and ties the story more directly into the imagery of that story rather than the language behind it. And it's that final point there that encapsulates everything else that goes into this process. The words, you know, the language itself, is not as important as the story that it's telling. As the book tells us, the best way to solve a problem is to ask for the story behind it. And that's what Miranda and Grim Wilkins want to actually give us here. It's not about the verbiage, you know, the lyricism of the language or anything else. It's about putting emphasis constantly on the visual story and the visual storytelling. And it comes together in a beautiful package that teaches a lot about how comics work as a form. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can become a patron and get access to over three years of exclusive content and additional writing. You can help us keep the show running. You can find me on Twitter at HassanOE and my Eisner winning magazine panel by panel at panelxpanel.com. Finally, hit subscribe and that notification bell to keep up to date with all the latest episodes and I'll see you next time.